first half, and it just seemed like the defensive intensity picked up right there. Yeah, uh, you know, Rick, uh, Mooney does a great job. Uh, played against him when I was at the College of Charleston. It's hard to guard. It's a lot going on. Them guys, you know, got a good pace on the offense. Uh, they got a lot of shooters. Um, but I thought we broke down, you know, offensively a few times, made some uncharacteristic mistakes. Uh, and then defensively, we weren't necessarily executing the game plan. We weren't doing what we said we needed to do to be successful. So it took to the middle of the first half before we finally decided we're going to do what we said we need to do to be successful. We got to get over the handoffs and be physical and tough, you know, trying to blow it up. And then, um, you know, we got to take care of the ball and try to execute at a high level, be on one accord. I thought the first 10 minutes of the game, they really had us on our heels and we were beating ourselves. I mean, they were, they were doing a good job of beating us, but we were helping them. And I thought we cleaned that up in the middle of the first half. And I, I think we won probably the rest of the game, uh, the last 28 minutes of the game. Jayden kind of defended the ball a little more. It seemed like he attacked a little more. Yeah, I thought it was all the guys, this total team effort. Um, you know, they showed a lot of good endurance and, 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 you know, like in terms of like toughness. They just showed a lot of endurance and toughness, inner strength. It's hard to chase all that stuff and deny everything. Um, and we said, hey, look, let's see, can Quinn beat us? You know, we're going to take every, t try to take stuff away from everybody else. Let's see, can he beat us? He had a really good game, but it wasn't enough to beat us, you know? Yeah, two guys with double-doubles. It was a lot of game rebounding from your team. How big was that just to get the second chance opportunity? How key was that? Yeah, they played hard. They were, they were hunting those rebounds, uh, guys running in, trying to get second chance points. Um, you know, I know Prince was great. You know, Devin, even some of the guards were running in getting rebounds. So that was just a total team effort. We thought we needed to try to attack the paint, whether that be post-ups, drives, or offensive rebounds. So they did a good job of that. So with your bench also came in there and gave, you, gave, us, gave us spark, a double with the big shot right before the half. Um, Mason with the, he had some key shots as well. So like a lot of those guys. Yeah, yeah Mason, Mason came in, gave us a good lift. You know, he's a fourth year player, so. Uh, and, you know, we put Donald back in with one minute left. I'm not sure 100% why we put him in, but obviously we made the right decision because he went in with like 58 seconds. And uh, he made that three at the buzzer. I thought that was a huge momentum going into the locker room, uh, cutting it to four. And then the second half, we just kind of built on uh, that last four minutes of the first half. Yeah, yeah Coach. Um, Mason Massey had a tough game against the Citadel. Eight minutes, three turnovers, no points. Uh, what do you like from him that you're able to trust him Next yeah, I mean he's a he's a he's a veteran. So I think you know four years in college, you can't that's priceless. You can't take that away. And he's a second year player for us, so we got a good understanding of what we're doing. The game against Citadel was uncharacteristic for him. It wasn't him. It wasn't him why I didn't play him. It was DJ Han why I didn't play him. DJ Han had a career game. Jaden Zachary had a career game. So those guys were playing so well, it was hard to take them off the floor. But. I mean, Mason's a fourth-year player, and he, he got a good understanding of the game, and so he really helped us today. Coach, in the first half, it sort of felt like one of the one of these non-conference losses from last year. Um, how does the result and the way you guys battled back prove that this team is different? I mean, you know, hey, it's uh, it was it wasn't looking good. It wasn't looking good. It wasn't going good. You know, I was trying to figure out should I call a timeout? Should I let them play through it? Um, I did call a timeout once. I don't know what the situation was. Maybe we were down twelve. And basically, I just told them, hey, guys, if they're going to beat us, let them beat us. But we can't beat ourselves. You know, we can't. And we got to be, we got to do what we say we're going to do. And let's try to execute the plan. They went out and had a better uh, approach to what they were doing. But I think every year is different. You know, last year we had a lot of first-year guys. This year we got a lot of second- and third-year guys. So I think just being in those situations, they remember last year too. And, and they know. I guess they've learned how to dig their way out of it. You know, that's new. That's new for us. I mean, at home, being in that situation, down 12 or 14, we had to learn how to dig our way out of that situation, and we did. You know, coach uh, Jaden was one for nine until that big shot at the end. Um, he still led the team in plus minus at I think it was 13. What are things that he did specifically tonight, despite struggling, that might not show up on the stat sheet? Well, you know, if you one for nine and you're still on the floor. That means the coach must be see a lot of good things he like. He just, he is the head of, he's BC basketball, okay? So he's tough, he's gritty, uh, he can really defend. You know, we wanted to try to wear down their best player. So I thought he was fighting that guy every possession, making it hard for him. 
So I didn't even realize he wasn't making shots. You know, I was just I saw that he was giving great effort on defense. He was communicating, leading his team, um, and so you know that's why he stayed out. You know, because if you get nine shots, it's only it only takes about a total of a minute and five seconds to take nine shots. What else are you doing with the rest of the minutes? So he do so many other things with the rest of the minutes that if he don't have a great shooting game, he still can stay on the floor and impact winning. All right, anything else, Root? All right, we'll take the question from Zoom. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Good, you? Good night. Uh, so two close wins in a row. Can you describe, you know, what you got to practice, you know, during practice, that those will take you situations go your way, just what you see from your team. Is that anything different from last year in terms of pulling out those close wins so far? I don't know. I think we just play a lot. We play a lot in practice of five-on-five five live scenarios. Um, you know, we've, we've done a few late-game situations, probably not enough. Um, but they come up in practice when we play in five-on-five. Five. There's a lot of overtime games in practice because of the competitive uh, competitiveness of the two groups. And so, um, you know, I think just playing a lot and competing in practice, you know, that's, that's the reason why we're able to understand how to figure it out how to win a possession when we need to win a possession. And um, that's what I say about that. Oh, Jeff, two quick ones for me. Uh, one was with Vegas, not something Prince said, where he said, you know, we're going to ourselves and, and know our identity. Um, I know a big point identity is really what's strong defense. So how is this team starting to form? It's, uh, uh, you know, it's idiosyncratic and, you know, part of it that, that makes them unique. Yeah, we played. Um, the first two games, I think we were, well, between our scrimmages and the two games, we were having about 87 points a game. You know, we were scoring a lot of points. And I want to score. I want to score a lot of points. But I know at the end of the day, you have to have a staple and you have to have something to stand on. And we have to stand on our defense to the best of our ability because it gives you a chance. You know, um, they had, Richmond had averaged 95 points before they came in this game. So, you know, I didn't want it to get in the 90s. I didn't want it to get in the 80s. Um, so we kept it in the 60s with just great effort and, and, and togetherness. Well, I didn't, I didn't really ask uh, the guys about bricks. Um, I know the past, uh, uh, you know, words that I've heard you, just how do you define it and, and how important is it for you with the defensive identity to keep getting those? Yeah, I mean, just like I said, you got to stand, you got to stand be able to have a staple and you got to be able to stand on something. So the bricks for us is just, you know, we want to get multiple stops and, um, and we want to stack them as much as we can throughout a game. So uh, hard to build a house, you know, if you don't lay the first brick. And so um, you got to start somewhere and, and that's what we try to do is stack them throughout the game.